Remember this shot from Ratatouille? It's iconic, not just because it's gorgeously animated, but also because of where it takes place in the movie. Remy emerges from being lost in the depths of the underground sewers, starving to realize that he is in Paris, France, the city where dreams come true. The swell of the music adds to the romance of the scene, and we feel so much hope for Remy. We really think that he is going to somehow figure it all out. And you know what? He does. All this time, I've been underneath Paris. And it's not just Ratatouille. If you've ever seen Midnight in Paris, Before Sunset, Amelie, An American in Paris, Moulin Rouge, and so, so many others, it is always the same story. Now, I can't speak to the other generations, but I know that as a millennial, we have been fed this idea of Paris as a character since we were kids. It's a place that's stereotyped as being full of love and lust and emotion. It's where you go to fall in love and to paint and to make art and to eat croissants and baguettes and live this bohemian lifestyle as you walk walk through the shadow of the Eiffel Tower. And now, it's catching up. This person says, Paris is totally overrated and is probably one of the worst places in France. This other person says, I simply was not moved by Paris the way other people said I would. And this one, Paris is the worst city in the entire world. Jeez. Now, these are all on Reddit. And Reddit, of course, is a place where people go to just shout their unpopular opinions. But the thing is that all of these have hundreds of upvotes and comments agreeing with them. The sentiment is real. The people are disappointed with Paris. Now, let me set the record straight. I am not one of those people. I love Paris. I visited twice, once on my own and once with friends. And in both instances, I was thrilled with the amount of activities that there were for me to enjoy, the food that I found to eat, and even the grumpiness of the Parisian people is sort of funny when you can take a step back from it and realize the sheer number of tourists that they have to deal with on a daily basis. As a New Yorker, I can sort of relate. But for many people, the magic of Paris is dead, gone, and buried. Why is that? The idea of Paris as a haven for lovers with beautiful romanticism is hardly new. Ratatouille wasn't the first to do it and Disney did not invent the idea. So why are people suddenly pissed at Paris now? and not before. Well, firstly, it's the ease and the cost of travel. With discount airlines popping up all the time, I'm looking at you, French B. It's easier than ever for an individual to fly from the United States or Canada or South America or Asia or wherever to Paris to see it for themselves. People are also traveling much more than they ever have before. Globalization is real, and the idea of visiting Europe is no longer this once-in-a-lifetime dream for a lot of people. In the past, so many people would never be able to actually afford to trip to Paris themselves, and so they transported themselves there through the cinema. And here comes the adventure now! Millennials may have changed the mold as far as accessibility to Paris is concerned, but it hasn't changed the way that we were brought up. And so many people will touch down, stamp their passport, exit the airport, and be greeted by a big city, a place in which many people suffer from homelessness, a metro system that might occasionally smell like piss, petty crime and pickpockets, over tourism and heavy crowds, construction, rain, and countless other examples of things that don't happen in the movie character version of Paris. Paris is not a magical place after all, and we need to learn that ASAP so that we can start appreciating it for what it actually is. So what is it really? How should you be thinking ahead of your visit to Paris? Well, without a doubt, it's a city of incredible history. A walk through the catacombs is all you need to be reminded that millions upon millions upon millions of people have lived their entire lives in this town. It's home to some of the greatest pieces of art the world has ever known. Between the Louvre and the Musée d'Orsay, just to name a couple museums, Paris houses countless pieces of famous art, such as the Mona Lisa, the Thinker, apples and oranges, and so much more. It has incredible food, but you have to know where to look. Do your research and don't settle for eating at expensive places near major tourist attractions. And on a clear night, it really is just as beautiful as the movies make it out to be. Take a boat ride down the River Seine if you can and watch the reflection of the buildings in the water and the sparkle of the Eiffel Tower. And don't worry if you're with someone or if you're alone. I did it by myself back in 2021 and it was one of the greatest travel experiences of my life. You just have to set aside whatever you think it should be in favor of whatever it actually is. Why doesn't this happen with other big cities? My guess is just because the movie character of other cities is grittier. New York and Chicago are always shown featuring robberies and gangsters in movies. London is shown as cold and sad and wet. 
Tokyo is a part of so many different storylines, especially within anime, that it doesn't really have one cohesive set of character traits. In Japan, they actually have a medical term for this experience. It's called Paris Syndrome, and it's effectively a severe form of culture shock. On the whole, I do feel bad for people who visit Paris and leave feeling disappointed. Not because I'm certain that you will have a perfect visit if you go, but instead because I have also grown up with these movies. And I know how easy it is to imagine that your experience will be the same as it was for the people in these films. That's the thing about travel. You have to be genuinely open to the cities and the countries that you visit. It's okay to know a thing or two and have an itinerary of activities, but from there, I think it's so important to travel with an open heart and allow the city and the country to just impact you in whatever way it impacts you naturally and without any preconceived notions of what it should be. Plus, New York City smells a whole lot worse, no matter how you slice it.